And so turn to Exodus 15, Exodus 15. You go, man, we're in the Easter experience. Why are you going to the Old Testament? Uh, well, I'm going to tell you why. i got a story I'm going to inject throughout the teaching this morning. But if you want a title for the sermon, I normally don't do this, but from the very beginning, here's the title of the sermon for today. And this sermon has been sort of marinating and stirring in me for quite a few weeks now. And so that's why I'm breaking away a little bit from where we were going uh, this week or where I planned to go. But the sermon title is The Remedy of the Resurrection. The Remedy of the Resurrection. Or another way of saying it is The Miracle of the Resurrection. Uh, together, and I'm going to get to the teaching in just a moment, so you turn to Exodus 15, we'll be in John chapter 1 also, but I want to take a moment just to cast some vision for us as leadership to you as the body of Element Church. If you will, everyone should have had one of these on your seat. If you didn't get one of these that wasn't on your seat, will you raise your hand? Just raise your hand. If there's an usher, if you'll come and bring some. Does everybody have one? If you don't have one, just sort of raise your hand up. I'm assuming everybody has one. If you will, take that card, and, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate the miracle of the resurrection together. Uh, that's what Easter is all about, the power of the resurrection, celebrating the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what Easter is about. It's not, just a, it's not about eggs. We can have fun hiding eggs, but it's about the resurrection of Jesus. And so together, corporately together, we're going to celebrate Easter, the resurrection of Jesus, with three weeks of what we're going to call Element Easter Evangelism. All right? Say those three words. Element Easter Evangelism. It's going to be three weeks leading up to Easter Sunday. So that's going to be March 14th, starting next Sunday, the 21st and the 28th. So the week of March 14th, the week of March 21st, the week of March 28th, and it will end on Easter Sunday and we're going to have a celebration on Easter Sunday, the celebration of the resurrection, but some other things also. We're going to celebrate what God does in and through this challenge, this evangelism push that we're placing before you. This word evangelism can be a $5 word that we may not really totally understand even if we speak Christianese in the church. Here, here's what it means. The spreading of the gospel. I looked it up. I know what it means. You know what it means, but I just thought, wonder what the dictionary says. The spreading of the gospel through our personal witness. That's what it said. The spreading of the gospel through our personal witness. Now, what is the gospel? Paul writes about that to the church at Corinth. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That is the gospel. So, put that in the context of spreading the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus through our personal witness. So, here's what we're going to do. It's 331. Everybody say that. 331. Three weeks, three people, one question. They just sort of hit us as leadership. Again, leading up to the three weeks before Easter, here's what we want you to do. We just want you to pray. That's it. How many think you can do that? All right, good. You say, I know there's a trick. You just got us to raise your hand. There's really not. We want you to pray that God will put three people in your path that you can ask this question, which is on the other side. The question is this. If God could do a miracle in your life today, what would that be? I want to pray for that miracle for you. I want to pray for that. Now, I know when we hear about it, we hear the word evangelism, you know, it can get fearful about that. I understand that. I, I struggle with that too, all right? I have to push through. But God's going to give us divine appointments. So we're giving you a week ahead. We're going to pray for divine appointments, capital D, capital D divine appointments that God is going to orchestrate. And all you have to do is when God brings that person to your path, and he's going to do it if you're praying, you're just going to ask that question. You can say, hey, man, my church is wanting us to do this, or you can ever how God leads you to present it. That's fine. Let, let me just tell you, I could give you story after story after story of how God has used this. But one that sticks out to me was a, few, a couple of years ago, I was in uh, Awful House. I mean, Waffle House. I'm sorry, just joking. But uh, I was in Waffle House. It's not awful because I like it. But uh, I was there, and... Ask the waitress this question. If God could do a miracle in your life today, what would it be? I want to pray for that for you. She just began to not cry. She began to weep. She began to weep. When I was in El Salvador, my friend Mario, we were talking about using this question to evangelize in the community. He said, we're not going to knock on doors. We're just going to let God give us divine appointments. And he, he admitted later, he said, man, I didn't know about this question. You know, 
He said, but he went to a little juice bar, they call it, where they make juices there in El Salvador, juice drinks. And he said, I'm going to try it. And there was a lady there, and he asked her the question, if God could do a miracle in your life today, what would, what would it be? I want to pray for that for you. She sort of was like, oh, I don't know. And said, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just stirred in him that a miracle is something only God can do. A miracle is something only God can do. And he said that to her. He said, now you know that a miracle is something only God can do. What would that be? I want to pray for that. So tears began to stream down her face, and she said, well, a few days ago, my husband left, me and my children, and a few weeks ago, I found out that I have breast cancer. And he was like, Mario was like, wow. Why, in his mind, he's going, why did she not share those in the beginning? You don't have to say when God leads you to these divine appointments, these three people. He's going to lead you to more, by the way. But you don't have to inject that a miracle is only something God can do. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit may prompt you to do that, to make people realize in the culture and the context where we live that a miracle is something only God can do. And let me tell you, in the season we're in as a culture, the context we're in as a country, right now, more than ever, man, is an opportunity for the church. 85% of people accept Christ during a time of crisis. If we polled this room, there was probably some crisis in about 85% of the people in this room when you gave your life to Christ. And then there is crisis going on in the context of our culture. And man, people are in need of the remedy of the resurrection. They're in need of a miracle of the resurrection. And so God is going to use that. Now, that's all you got. You got to pray, and then you got to pray. Pray that God will place three people in your path during the course of the week. You ask the question, and then pray with those people. Now, some of you, we, call, we like to call it green light, yellow light. You're going to get a green light if they are like ready for the gospel. This woman at Awful House was ready for the gospel, all right? She was ready for the gospel, got to present the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Some of you are uncomfortable with that, and that's okay. That's okay. God still wants to use you by just praying with someone. But let me just say this. Let me say this. We want to give you next week, as we launch it next week, we're going to give you some salvation conversation cards. It'll have the gospel on it. You can utilize that. You can put that in your pocket, pocketbook, whatever, and you can keep those with you, all right? We're going to give you nine of those, okay? That's what we're going to give you. You may, you may want to present the gospel in a different way. I like the Roman road. I'm a visual person. I like to write on a napkin. I'll, I've written on asphalt with a rock. I like to draw stuff, all right? The cross, and there's a great gulf between God and you and sin, you know, and the bridge is Jesus. I, I like doing that because I like visual. Let me tell you this. You can also, we're, prepare, we're preparing you this week. You can also go on your phone. You can just type in, I'm not real tech savvy, but you type in three circles evangelism app. It'll come up. It's, it's entitled Life on Mission. And it's something you can download and you can take somebody through the gospel on your phone. If you're more tech savvy, you want to do that. If you're more like me, I like to draw the six, three circles on the ground or the napkin, okay? But we want you to be prepared for that. Here's all we want you to do. We want to equip you that if the Holy Spirit in this divine appointment gives you a moment, all right, that you're ready. And many of you are ready already, okay? But it, again, here's, here's what I'm going to do right now. I just released the pressure valve. There is no pressure on you. All you got to do is pray. Pray that God will give you three people in your path, three divine appointments. You're praying right now. You're beginning to pray for the week of the 14th, week of the 21st, week of the 28th. And God is going to do that. And all you're going to do is ask the miracle question and pray with him. Now, let me say, if the Holy Spirit leads you to ask the miracle question and you're at Walmart and there's a line a mile long, that's not the time to evangelize, okay? I'm going to go ahead and say maybe the Holy Spirit's not prompting you in that moment, okay? Okay, because you don't want to get her in trouble, get people mad, okay? But let the Holy Spirit lead you. But all you got to think about is, I'm going to pray that God gives me three people each week and I'm going to ask them the miracle question, all right? That's what we're going to do. If you're on board with that, say amen. Amen. God's going to use it. Here's what's going to happen. Easter Sunday, we're believing. You're believing that on Easter Sunday, we're going to have a baptism celebration. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And we're going to see, I believe, we're going to see people come to Christ through this. 
We're going to see people that need to follow through with baptism because of salvation. It's going to be an exciting time, and I am looking forward to it. All right? Well, here we go. We're going to be in Exodus 15. You should be there already. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at that passage in the context of the power of the cross, the power of the crucifixion, and the miracle of the resurrection. Listen to me. It has power for our lives now, okay? It has power for our lives eternally, but it has power for our lives earthly. Now, probably the majority of us in this room, we speak Christianese, okay? You've been in church most of your life, probably the majority of us, so when we think about the resurrection and the, the power of the cross, I say this often, but we need to say, Holy Spirit of God, let me never grow callous to the cross of Christ Jesus. Let me never grow callous to the empty tomb. You've heard me say that before because that is my prayer every day, and so I'll speak it to you often because that is my prayer, that I never grow callous to the cross of Christ Jesus, that I never grow callous to the empty tomb. And so it has power for our lives now, today, not just one Sunday a year, all right? So give you a little background on Exodus 15. A lot of you know this, but some of you may not, and that's good. Moses, has, here's the context of what's going on in Exodus 15. Moses has led the children of Israel out of bondage and slavery in Egypt, away from Pharaoh, right? They come to the Red Sea. What I'm giving you, we're just scrolling through the iPhone of this whole situation, I'm giving you some snapshots. Okay, just some, some photos of what's taking place. So now, next picture, they're at the Red Sea. They come to the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his men are on their horseback. The, the horses are snarling. The guys are flying their chariots and their horses. Pharaoh decided, you know what? I don't want them to leave. I like having slaves. I like keeping them in bondage. But they're coming after them. They're going to bring them back to bondage and slavery. And they're standing there at the Red Sea. Now, I read an article in the Wall Street Journal, some person, i got other words for them, but th th some person said that, well, there was a sandbar, and Moses knew where that sandbar was. There's a Greek word for that. It's called baloney, okay? Baloney. And I want to prove it. So they come to the Red Sea. Moses raises his walking stick. You know the story. Raises his staff, the rod, whatever you want to call it. The sea parts, the children of Israel, God's people cross over to the other side. Then, all of a sudden, Wall Street Journal, that sandbar just vanished all of a sudden. No, it didn't. The sea closed back up and it encapsulated the Egyptian soldiers, the chariots, the horses. And the scripture records that not one of them survived because they fell off the sandbar. No. Because God said, I'm protecting my people. So God's hand of provision, hand of protection is upon them. And then we go into Exodus 15, and because of that situ situation, Exodus 15, the first part, is a victory song. They are singing victory. We are no longer victims. We are victors, right? And let me just give you a snippet of the victory song from Exodus 15. I'm going to read it from the message, you know, translation. And again, I'm just trying to paint the picture for you of the context of what's going on. Here's what, here's what they're singing. And here's, I'm singing my heart to God, what a victory. He pitched horse and rider into the sea. Just imagine them walking and they're singing, right? God is my strength. God is my song. And yes, God is my salvation. This is the kind of God I have and I'm telling the world. This is the God of my father. I'm spreading the news far and wide. God is a fighter, pure God, through and through. Pharaoh's chariots and army he dumped into the sea. The elite of his officers, he drowned in the Red Sea. Wild ocean waters poured over them. They sank like a rock in the deep blue sea. Your strong right hand, God, shimmers with power. Your strong right hand shatters the enemy. And then in verse 21, they said, Sing to God, what a victory. Sing to God, what a victory. Man, that's a victory song. Now, we're going to pick it up in verse 22. It's amazing how they go from a song to sorrow. Let's look. Verse 22, stand to your feet in honor of reading God's holy word. Verse 22 says, then Moses, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, said, then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. I'll come back to that. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Then they came to Merah, but they could not drink its waters because they were bitter. 
Therefore, it was named Merah. I'll come back to that. The people, let me just say this real quick. Sometimes you got to have a Merah moment to see a miracle. Okay? You'll see why in a minute. The people grumbled at Moses saying, what are we going to drink? If, we'd have, if I'd have been there, I probably would have too. Well, I'm thirsty. Come on, man. Then he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Some translations say a branch or a piece of wood, which he threw into the waters, and the waters became sweet. Everybody say sweet. Everybody say bitter. All right, we'll come back to that. There the Lord made a statute, not a statue, a statute and, and an ordinance for them, and, he, and there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and listen to his commandments, his word, and keep all his precepts, his word, and his statutes, his word, then I will put on you any of the I will not, not, everybody say not. I will not put on you any of the diseases which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am, some translations leave this out, I wish, they, I wish they wouldn't, for I am Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord who heals you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you so much, God, how you stir things within us and your word is alive and active and it comes alive. And God, you allow us to communicate those things to other people. So Holy Spirit of God, be my teacher today. Holy Spirit of God, be our teacher. God, go beyond my bumbles and mumbles and fumbles. And God, you speak to me. You speak to your people. And God, I pray, as we pray often, Father, let not your word just tickle our ears today. Father, let us not just be hearers, let us be doers. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Well, I said I would never say some of the things my parents have said to me over the years when they would say it, and I found myself when I got a teenager, I said it. I said it. Probably said it before he was a teenager. My parents would say, boy, you think money grows on trees? How many of you ever said that, right? All right, how many of you? Well, I want to ask this back. I was going to say, how many teenagers your parents have said that to you? But I said it, and when I said it, it was like, oh, no, I did it. I said it. Well, it's true, of course. Money doesn't grow on trees. But let me tell you what does. Miracles. And we're going to see it here in the Word of God. I, I say that in such an elementary way because I want us to see this as, as a tree of victory. I, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. It's spoil alert right here. Direction I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it right here. Man, if you don't see the prophetic right here, man, the tree of victory is the cross. The tree is the cross. All through the Old Testament. The Old Testament is prophetic pictures of Jesus. That's it. All through the Old Testament. Look at Abraham and Isaac. Abraham, his only son, he was going to kill his only son, place wood on him. Certainly, I don't have to paint that picture any clearer for you than that. And then he provided a sacrifice, right? Man, that is prophetic of Jesus. Prophetic of the Messiah to come. Prophetic of our Savior, Jesus. Money may not grow on trees, but miracles do. Victory does. Let me just pause and say, where I was supposed to be this week is this, in Luke 22 and Luke 23. And here's what's amazing. This, I'm going to tell you how this began to stir, stir in me, but, but, man, it's amazing how I was like, well, God, I need to stay on the Easter experience train, Right? And God just kept stirring this in me and stirring this in me. And man, and then as I began to look, it, it does line up with the Easter experience. So this week with our Easter experience, as far as the element family together, read Luke 22 and 23. Many of you speak Christianese. You've read it before. I know that. But read it again and, and you read it and say, Lord, let me see it in a fresh way. Let me read it in a fresh way. It's Jesus being tortured by the Roman soldiers. It's before he goes to his crucifixion, which was his execution, which became our salvation. Man, read it and read it with that prayer of God, let me never grow callous to the cross of Christ Jesus. But again, today, and it does connect with the resurrection and the crucifixion and the cross and the miracle of the cross and the miracle of the resurrection. So today we're going to look in the Old Testament, Exodus 15. I just want you to understand where we're going. 
And look, we're going to see the power of the resurrection in Exodus 15 and how this can affect our lives. So let's just walk through it verse by verse, all right? Here it is, verse 22. Verse 22. Well, let, let me just say this first. The, the way the Lord led me to this, um, and I'm going to tell you a portion of the story now, then a portion of the story about halfway through, and then I'll finish the story at the end, is... And I shared this a few weeks ago. A friend of mine called me a number of weeks ago, and he called from the hospital. He was in intensive care, and um, he had COVID. And this is a man of faith, man of faith. But I could hear just fear, understandably so, right? He said, well, no, no, I wouldn't have any fear. Okay, super spiritual. But, but, but let me say this. There, there was some fear. Because of things that begin to go through your mind. And again, the enemy does attack us, attack us, and he wants to bring a spirit of fear. Just a little side note, during this season of time, God has really revealed to me, and I feel like there's a sermon stirring at some point, about how there's healthy fear and there's spirit of fear. A healthy fear, I put a seatbelt on, right? But I don't put a seatbelt on because, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to be in a wreck today. It's not that. So there's healthy fear that I can prove to you biblically, and I know we struggle with that word fear, but then the, the spirit of fear. Man, that's how the enemy wants to weigh us down, that we can't function because we're afraid of this and we're, we're in fear. And that's not what was going on, but the enemy was wanting to attack my friend with the spirit of fear, right? And I say spirit of fear because that's what Scripture calls it. I'm not attaching anything to that to make it sound more spiritual. Man, that, that is the spirit of fear. And so as we prayed together on the phone, like I do, I think, every time, if I'm praying for someone, God, to bring healing physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually to someone, I pray, God, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord who heals. Let me say this. I, I just got to say this, man. Praying for healing for people, man, it's, it's not denominational. It's biblical. We, we need to get that out of our minds. We've somehow made it denominational. And when we do that, that's called sin. Man, it's just biblical. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple thinker. But I look at it, and I know that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. So when I pray for someone, I'm going to pray for God to heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, and I'm going to leave the results up to God. That's it. That's, that's how simple it is. Beth Moore said, and I've said this many times, I love this. She said, it's really not about what God does. It's believing that he can. Man, I'm going to tell you, we live in a season as a church, capital C and little c element. God wants, individually and corporately, he wants to raise our belief level. I'm telling you, that's what he's trying to do for the church. Man, he wants to raise our belief level. And let me pause and say this. You see where we're going. The power of the resurrection, the power of victory, the power of healing that is there because of the resurrection of Jesus. And I know in this room, up in the balcony, down low and online, there are people that you have lost loved ones. There are people in this little C church and our family that have lost loved ones recently. And we go, Lord, why? if you're Jehovah Rapha, why didn't you heal them? You may be super spiritual that you don't, ever, you don't ask those questions. But I say, Lord, I, sometimes I don't understand. And God's okay with that because he understands I'm, I'm human. I'm in this broken, sinful, wicked world. And, man, my finite mind can't understand an infinite God in his ways. But here's all I know. No matter what the result is, it does not change the fact that he is Jehovah Rapha, he is the Lord who heals, and I will continue to believe that, continue to walk in that. Well, that's the first part of the story that led me to Exodus 15. I'll finish that story in just a moment. Verse 22, look at it. We read it, but let's look at it again, 22 and 23. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went in the wilderness of Shur. 
I, I said I'd come back to that. I, I get tickled at things in Scripture sometimes. This way my weird mind works. But I just, I just imagine they're, they're, in the, they're walking into the wilderness, and you know these people that are going, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, or the same people that are going, you know where you're going, Moses? And I just imagine a sign that says, sure. And he goes, I'm sure this is the right direction, right? Okay, that's, that's the way my brain works. But, so that was funnier to me than it was to you. But the wilderness of sure... They went a distance of three days into the wilderness and found no water. What I want to do is walk through this and pull out application. Here's the application. Some of you are wandering in the wilderness right now. You are. Some of you are wandering in the wilderness. Some of you know somebody who's wandering in the wilderness. I recall when I was wandering in the wilderness with no purpose and no meaning in life. I was raised in the church. I went to church nine months before I was born. But I was wandering in the wilderness with no purpose, no meaning. I was only sure of one thing, that I was wandering and I was in the wilderness. That's two things. But... So I guess I want to say to you is, are you wondering, are you in the wilderness right now? Let me tell you that Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, Jesus, the one who was resurrected, the one who is alive today, I'm not, I don't say this to sound pastoral. I don't say it to sound super spiritual. I say it because I've lived it, and I say it because I've seen many people live it, and I'm telling you, he can bring you out of the wilderness. He is there in the midst of it with you. Some of you have a wayward child, and man, they are in the wilderness, and God is doing a work in their life no matter what they say with their mouth. You have a spouse, and they are wayward, and they, and they have placed you in the wilderness, and they're in the wilderness. And man, I'm telling you, God can restore that marriage. He can resurrect it. You just have to stand for it. And here's what's amazing. It says, they came to Merah. It's a desert. But they came to Merah, but they could not drink its waters because they were bitter. Two things come to mind for me. And I said it a moment ago, but I'm telling you, they just came from a victory moment. They were singing a victory song, and how quickly they went from a song to sorrow. But here's what's amazing. We may experience a victory when he parts the Red Sea, and he will. He did, and he still will. But sometimes we may have to go to Merah. We may have to go to a bitter place. We may have to go through the wilderness. We may have to go to Merah because we're, we've got to experience that Merah moment before we're going to see a miracle. I'm telling you, though, some of you online and in this room, you need to receive that right now, that you're in a Merah moment and just keep believing for a miracle because he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who will heal it. He will do it. They came to Merah, but they could not drink its waters because they were bitter. I, I struggled not answering this question the first time I read through it when you were standing to your feet, but I'll ask it now. And I want to ask a question. I'll just make a statement. There's some of you online, some of you in the balcony, some of you in this room down low that you are bitter. You're bitter. You're bitter. I don't know why you're bitter. Some of you, are, an individual is the target of your bitterness, but you may want to evaluate. You may just be angry and bitter at God. And I'm telling you, you're in a may raw moment, and he can do a miracle, and he can set you free from this, as the Scripture says, this poisonous root of bitterness. I had it in my life, in my first five years of youth ministry, somewhere in there, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I had a poisonous root of bitterness in my life. And the only thing that could remove it was Jehovah Rapha. The only thing that could remove it was going, Lord, I'm going to tell you, this is where I was. Lord, I, I'm going to speak it even though I don't even mean it. 
But I'm speaking that I forgive, and I said that person's name. Lord, I forgive this person, and I've shared this before. And all of a sudden, this man just, it was like a weight was lifted off of me. And in that Mayra moment, man, a miracle came upon me. And man, it was amazing. I can, the reason I'm just laughing because I can, it feels like it was yesterday. Man, it's like the Holy Spirit just pulled that poisonous root of bitterness. And I'm going to tell you what the enemy tries to do. Man, he tries to put the seed of that back into my life at times. But this is the way my mind thinks. The Word of God is like spiritual roundup. I love spraying weeds. It's like spiritual roundup on the weed it spray that weed, and I'm going to tell you, it kills it. And I'm fe- I feel it sometimes. I feel it coming, and the enemy's trying to plant that seed. Or forget the enemy. My flesh wants to plant that seed, and I go, well, I deserve to be angry. I deserve to have bitterness. I deserve to have unforgiveness. And the Holy Spirit says, you have to forgive as Christ has forgiven you. And, man, the roundup of the Word of God, man, it just puts that weed out. It kills that seed. Some of you in a Mayra moment, and you're bitter, and you made a conscious choice to say, I'm going to be be bitter rather than better. I'm going to tell you, I'm better today. I'm better today than I was when I was bitter. So you just let the Holy Spirit stir that in your heart online or in this room if, if that's you. But don't miss your Mayra moment. Man, God wants to do a miracle. Man, we got, we've got to keep, we move from a song to sorrow. I don't know about you, but that's happened so many times in my life. Man, I'll be singing a victory song, and then all of a sudden I move to sorrow. And it's because of situations. It's because of scenarios. There's so many scenario, scenarios of sorrow, and some of you are in the midst of that right now. Here's one thing we can know for sure in a broken world is sorrow's coming. It's coming. But I'm going to tell you, for me, I I don't wake up worried about that. Man, I wake up truly, and I have to be reminded by brothers and sisters in Christ sometimes, reminded by the Word of God, reminded by the power of the Holy Spirit through His Word, that, man, I serve a risen Savior. I serve Jehovah Rapha, and I'm not going to let the spirit of fear overcome my life. And I'm going to walk in freedom and what Christ has for me. Man, let him heal those scenarios. Let him take you from sorrow back to a song. Maybe you've never sung a victory song. Man, but as he releases that bitterness and you take up that sweet water, man, the living water of Jesus, man, you're going to begin to sing a victory song. And you may say, I don't understand it. I don't know how I'm going to get there. Here's the thing. You just got to pray and believe for that and speak it. Man, the power of life and death is in the tongue. It's amazing to me. Let me just have a little side note. Some of us, some of us struggle being negative. You're just so negative. And I'm, no one comes to mind for me. And the reason I'm so passionate about it is because I was one. <laughs> and I can still struggle with that at times. Ask my wife. But don't be like the children of Israel. Man, you, you were singing a victory song, and man, now you're like, man, glass half empty all the time. I thought of this as I was preparing because, again, I, I've been there in those moments where, and, and please, I say this in love with, with compassion. I, I want to see you walking in victory, walking in the resurrection power of Jesus, living a life healed by Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. And I'm talking just internally right now. That's where I'm focused. You know, that's where, that's where he wants to heal too, right? I, I, I'm going to tell you, I've been in situations where we're praying for physical healing and we still will, but I've realized the healing that's taking place is within the people that are praying for the person for healing and the person that we're praying for to be healed. I think of the, the four friends that brought their friend to Jesus Man, I'll tell you, there was a whole lot of healing that took place between his house when he was on that mat, mat before he got to Jesus. I'm going to tell you, there was some amazing healing that took place in their lives and in his life. All we pay attention to is the physical healing right there when Jesus says, take up your mat and walk, you were healed. And, and praise God for that. That is Jehovah Rapha. But Jehovah Rapha was also the one that said, take your friend to the healer. I mean, God was doing a healing work in them. It's not just the destination. We know this. It's sometimes the journey. 
man, prayed for 20 years for God to heal my wife physically. But I realized that it was a healing journey for me and my wife. I'm telling you, God was doing a work in there, and I'm going to share a little bit of that more here in just a moment. But let me get back. Verse 24, here it is. The people grew discontented, grumbled. I love the Amplified says, murmured. That word actually translates, and I love when the original words paint a picture. It paints the picture of this. So, well, well, you put us out here in this desert. We can't, don't have your water. We'll say, yeah. You met those people under the breath? Again, they're just negative, right? That word murmured actually translates under your breath. And Moses, they're saying, hey, what are we going to drink, Moses? What are we going to drink? Verse 25, first part of verse 25, then he cried, or I like the translation, it says he prayed. You put crying and praying together, that's a passionate prayer. And what's amazing to me, we don't miss it. Man, look how they responded, and look how Moses responded. Word of God is so clear. My little girl, when she was 11, taught me this. Paul writes to the church at Philippi, and he says, don't worry about anything, but pray about anything. Anybody know? Everything. You say, yeah, 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 but no, no, no. That's the problem, Neil. When you, put a, when you say, I know what the Word of God says, but that's when I get in trouble, right? It says, pray about everything. Don't worry or have anxiety about anything, but pray about everything. Man, God, when he breathed those words through Paul's pen, he didn't stutter. Man, it's clear. How do we respond? We saw how the children, the children of Israel respond, and sometimes that's the way I respond, just being real. But then we saw how Moses responded. Man, he cried out to God. He prayed to the Lord for help, and it says, and the Lord showed him a tree. Everybody say, showed him a tree. Showed him a tree, a branch of a tree. Man, he showed him a branch of a tree. And look what he does. Which he threw into the waters. Now, God instructed him to do that. And the waters, when he put it in the waters, and it fell off the stage. No, I'm just kidding. You throw that back up here. Thanks, man. It became sweet. Thanks, man. It's sweet right down there. There it is. You know, I, I can't help myself, but I think of, uh, I think it made a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I think it made the comeback at the movie theater. I think of sweet. You know, they go, sweet, you know. But, man, that's what happened. Man, he placed it. He placed the branch. He placed the tree. He placed the wood, whatever you want to say, into the water. He threw it into the water, and, man, it turned sweet. It turned sweet. Now, here, here's the deal. Just a little side note. As I begin to research, and I love shrubs. I love plants. I love landscape and that kind of stuff. Um, by the way, does anybody, well, I'm not, somebody guessed in the first service and just guessed wrong. So I hate when people guess wrong and you feel like a dumb dumb. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to tell you. This is laurel. Can everybody say laurel? This is, uh, this is Union, Gary, this is Union Mills laurel, all right? Union Mills laurel. That's right. And it's mountain laurel. Now, many scholars believe, the more research I did, and, and this is, a big deal, but it's not a big deal. When I say a big deal, here's what I believe God has revealed to me through this, is that God is so in the details, and he's so in the details of our lives. Man, how the Old Testament is prophetic of Jesus, and then Jesus comes in the New Testament we talked about. But I believe this is a, another prophetic picture. Many scholars believe that the tree that was there was rose laurel. Now, this is mountain laurel. But listen to me. You say, why would you have a, why are we going to have a study about laurel? Because I, I believe it's important. Laurel is, has been known for ages to be used for crowns. Laurel, the laurel tree is a symbol of victory and triumph. The laurel wreath, look at, look at this picture. Look at this picture. Now, when you see that, we automatically know, well, that's the Olympics. And now your mind can recall you've seen these crowns upon the athletes heads guess what plant guess what shrub that is on their head it's laurel it's laurel the laurel wreath has been regarded as a powerful symbol of victory it's tied historically to classical ancient greek roman listen and biblical times crowning a successful commander or athlete during their triumph that's amazing to me 
Paul, Paul the apostle, man, we know this, man, he was strongly influenced by the Greek culture. And you look at his, he talks about wrestling and running the race. You know, that's where we get our Olympics is from the Greek culture, the laurel crown from the Greek culture. And Paul was influenced by the Greek culture. And in his writings, as God breathed the words through him, man, he, you can see it there. You talk about running the race. It's like you can see the Olympics, the Greek Olympics taking place. Wrestling, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But he, he implies the laurel wreath of the Greek. If anybody during that time, when you said, hey, we're gonna, you've won the race, we're going to give you a victory crown. They wouldn't have imagined a gold crown with jewels. They would have thought of the laurel wreath, the laurel crown, the crown of victory. And Paul implies the laurel wreath of the Greek games in, in three of his letters, three of his epistles. You look at it later on. Philippians 4, Thessalonians 2, man, 2 Timothy. But the image is especially clear in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, where he talks about a, a victor's crown is mentioned. Again, it's not talking about a golden crown. It's the laurel wreath. It was a symbol of, of victory and triumph. Even in the book of James, in the book of James in the New Testament, it suggests a laurel crown, a, a victor's crown for those who persevere, for those who persevere. Well, it, just the more I thought about that, I just said, Lord, I just love how you're in the, in the details and how you're communicating that when we walk in victory and worship in Christ in our life, man, that's what he desires for us. He desires for us to walk in victory. And when he places that laurel tree branch into the water, man, the water was healed. And it's a symbol for us, a symbol of victory. What, what's amazing to me, and I don't want to read too much into the text, but again, just the prophetic components all throughout Scripture that I think about the laurel crown was a sign and a symbol of victory. And then you look and the, they placed a crown of thorns upon the head of Jesus. But what's amazing to me, and we're going to see it more in just a moment, that even with this laurel branch being placed into the water, if it was a laurel branch, and many scholars believe it was, and the more I study, the more I believe it was. Man, it's just, a, it's just screaming victory to us. But it also, when you think about a tree, I mean, the tree, it's a prophetic of the cross of Christ. And through Christ, what's amazing is they place a crown of thorns on his head to mock his victory and to mock his royalty. But they didn't understand that what was taking place, and it's been prophesied, even from Exodus 15, that he was going to be victorious. Because when he went to the tomb, when he died on the cross, on that tree, that he would go to a borrowed tomb, buried, dead, but he would rise again in victory. Man, I don't know about you, but that gets me excited within my heart, okay? Well, let me finish the story of my friend. Not finish, I'll give you the second portion. As I'm processing this, and the Lord has led me to this scripture, let me again tell you how he led me there. As I'm praying for my friend, his oxygen level when he got there was around 80-something, the next day, it was on 70-something, and the next day, it dropped to 60. If you don't know anything, that's not good. Not good. Well, the first day when I called and prayed with him, praying as to Jehovah Rapha, Lord, you are the one who heals. The next morning, I got up. I'm having my quiet time. I'm in the Word, and I'm praying, and, and, and I don't do that as, consistency as consistently as I need to. I'm just putting that out there. We need to become more consistent in the Word. I just didn't want to sit there and throw out a super spiritual sounding statement and say, well, I'm in the Bible every day, you know. But, but we need to be. We need to be. And so that morning, because here's why. Here's why I take, made note of that. Because how many times have I missed a word from God because I don't take the time to set an appointment with him and get in his word and let the Holy Spirit speak to me through his word. What I'm doing is I'm confessing my own fault to say to you, and when is the last time you've been in the Word? Man, God has something great for you. And all of this came out of that moment, that quiet time, that moment in the Word, where as I'm sitting there praying for my friend, the Holy Spirit, and only the Spirit of God can, says to my spirit, not audible, but louder than that, 
says, tell your friend, and he said his name. Tell him he needs to pray the word. And of course, I'm going, Lord, that's, that's not a revolutionary thought. Can you give me something else for him? Well, as I'm having my quiet time, the Holy Spirit just all of a sudden reminded me of the prayer that I pray often, God, you are Jehovah Rapha. And I just felt led to go and just find out where that was in Scripture. I didn't know. I felt better because I spoke to three or four pastors, or four pastors and then other people that wouldn't consider themselves a pastor, but they're pastors in my life. And I asked them, do you know where it says Jehovah Rapha in Scripture? I felt better because none of them knew either, okay? And a lot of you didn't know till today. Well, I go to Exodus 15, and I'm reading that. And as I read that, and he put the wood in the water, and the water was healed, and God said, this is what the Holy Spirit's revealing to me in this moment, for myself, for us today, and for my friend in that moment. As he's struggling with COVID, oxygen level down to 60, in that room, in that ICU. And the Holy Spirit says, put the wood in the water, and he will heal it. He will heal contaminated water. He will heal sickness and disease. He will heal a marriage. He will heal your child. He will heal a relationship. He will heal your coworker. Because he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals. And, and here it is. Here it is. This is what hit me. And only the Holy Spirit could reveal this. Here's what the Holy Spirit stirred within me. And again, I'm not saying an audible voice. I'm just saying the Spirit bearing witness with my spirit, speaking this in, in that moment. Now, understand he had told me to tell my friend to pray the word. Took me to, to Jehovah Rapha in Exodus 15. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit said, Neil, the wood is the word. The wood is the word. And, and listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. So what he's saying, he's saying, that whatever situation you're in, you take the word of God and you place it into the water of your situation and he is Jehovah Rapha. Man, he is the Lord who heals. He will heal that situation. Man, this has just been sort of eating me up in a good way. My virtual small group, I, was, I, I had to take time to share it with them this week, just a little snippet of it. And, uh, and by the way, if you're not in a small group during the Easter experience, man, dive into this virtual group if you're not in one yet. Just, uh, just dive in. Send the church an email. We meet Tuesday. Man, love to have you join us. It was really a great time. And I'm a face-to-face -face person. But we were sitting there. We were studying the Word of God together. And I just had to share a little bit of this, of this with them. And later on that evening, one of the small group texted me. And they're going through some situations in their family. And they had taken, they took a picture in their hallway, in their house. They had written out scriptures and pasted it on the hallway. Now, let me say this. I know these people, and they're saying, man, we're putting the, the word of God, the wood of the word, in the water of this situation we're in, and we're going to see Jehovah Rapha heal this situation. We're going to see him heal some relationships. In no way are they looking at that as a lucky charm. We don't serve Santa Claus. I'm going to tell you, we just got to understand the power of the word of God. I'm telling you, the church, we have forgotten that. I have forgotten that. The power of the Word of God, I said it a moment ago, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Man, let's, let's speak not some things that maybe I fabricate. Man, let me just speak the Word of God. Man, speak the Word of God into situations. Man, you have a, a situation, and you've got to take the wood of the Word, and you need to place it. If you had not heard this yet, please hear it. Whatever situation is going on in your life, in someone's life connected to you, take the wood of the word, put it into that situation, and Jehovah Rapha will, will, W-I-L-L, -L, all capitals, he will show up. I'm telling you, he would. The wood is the word. The wood is the word. Verse 25b, 6a, here we go. There the Lord made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he, he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and listen to his commands and keep foremost in your thoughts and actively obey, that's what keep means, 
all his precepts and statutes. Now, we, we did a series quite some time ago, If Then. The Holy Spirit has been teaching me this if then principle. And it's right there. He says, if you'll do this, if you'll take my word, that's what he's saying, my precepts, my commands, my word, and you'll obey it, man, I will be Jehovah Rapha. I will be the Lord who heals you. Write this down. It's just a little side note. There is power in his precepts. I'm telling you, the wood is the word. There's power in his precepts. You've got to believe that. You've got to hang on to that. You can't back off in 26, last part of 26. He says, then, there it is. He's saying, if you'll do this, and let me say this. I said this during that series, but some of you, listen to me online in this room. You're in a season of if, and you better be obedient in this season of if, or you're going to miss the then. I'm telling you, I've done it, lived it, got the T-shirt. Man, this is a season of if for the children of Israel. He says, if you'll do it, if you'll see my wood as the word, he said, you'll live it, my commands, my precept, there's power in my precepts. He says, then I will not put on you any of the diseases which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. I'll close with this. Man, I've gone late, but it's all right. Here we go. Let me say this because I may not get to it. Just write this down. The tree transforms our trials. Can you say it with me? The tree transforms our trials. That's just a little, I was free. I'm not even going to charge for that one. Here we go. Here we go. God used my wife to teach me about the wood of the word. But God used her years ago. I was in youth ministry for 20 years. I had hair when I started. No, I actually didn't. But I'll never forget, we were taking some youth to camp. We went to Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. We were there. And my wife had been diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and it's, it's an intestinal disease. And let me just give God praise. But God has done healing works in her, her body and her life over the last 20-something years. I praise him for it, and we'll continue to walk in that and believe that he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals. We'll continue to speak it. We will not back off of that, and then we'll, we'll accept the results. But we will believe. But... Rewind, we're there at Liberty University. She's been diagnosed with Crohn's disease, just wrestling with that, battling with that. And um, she went to, we went to a session, and this guy said something in that session. It really stuck out to her, and we talked about it afterwards. But I get home, fast forward, we get home, and uh, we're a newly married couple, and we're home, and, and where she was, she was in her room, and she was in pain with this Crohn's disease. And I'll never forget, this is what I heard, in pain. Here's what was going on. It was a victory song being sung in the midst of sorrow and pain. Here was what it was. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. And she was in pain. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, in my know, then I am strong. That's Paul wrote those words to the church at Corinth. Paul lived that. As my wife's praying that, singing a victory song in the midst of sorrow, and the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, saying we need to continue to believe and speaking to her that he is Jehovah Rapha. Man, he is the Lord who heals. We will believe that from the top of her head to the soles of her feet when we will leave the results up to God. That's it. So the wood is the word. Man, the word works. Man, the tree transforms our trials. The wood is the word. And I begin to think about that, and I promise I'll close with this. Man, John chapter 1, this whole the word, the word, the word. It says, in the beginning was the word in John 1. Now, you can't read the words in the beginning. Even if you're far from God and you've read any of the Bible, you went to a Sunday school class one time when you were seven. Man, when you hear the words in the beginning, man, you, you automatically look back to Genesis in the beginning, right? 
That's the same thing that's taking place in John 1. And here's what's amazing. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis, it says, let us, plural, make man in our, plural, image. You've heard this before, but this is theology. That is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus was there at creation. You don't, if you don't believe it, that's fine with me. I believe it. I know it, that he was there. But then John chapter 1 in the New Testament, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. If you don't know who it's talking about, it's talking about the same one that was prophesied in Exodus 15. It's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the Word. Man, we place the Word of God, you're placing Jesus into that water of your situation, and He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals. Fast forward, my friend. His oxygen level dropped from 80 the next day to 70. By the way, when it was at 80, we prayed this Jehovah Rapha prayer, continuing to pray. Next day, it dropped to 70. We kept believing. Next day, it dropped to 60. Kept believing. Glory be to God. My friend is home, and he is healthy, and he is whole in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. But I must say this. I said it a few minutes ago. But that's not the case for so many. So many of you have lost family members. You've lost children. And I don't understand why. But here's what I know. That even though there may have not been physical healing, and I promise I say this, not just to be pastoral or super spiritual. <laughs> Man, we, it doesn't change the, fa- change the fact that God still wants to manifest healing in your life, and it may be to heal your heart through the grief that you experience. It doesn't change the, fa- change the fact that he is Jehovah Rapha. Man, he is the Lord who heals. Man, he will heal your heart. Listen to me. Keep believing. Keep believing. Keep walking in it because Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord who heals. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. That tree, the cross of Christ Jesus, it will transform our trials. Some of you are going through trials. You're going through wilderness. You're wondering Man, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to him today. Man, he is Jehovah Rapha, the number one thing that he wants to do. Jesus, when he was walking this earth, man, he said the greatest healing is forgiveness of sins. And that's right as he was healing someone physically. So if you're online or you're in this room and you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never given your life to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, Man, he wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal you from the, a disease called sin. Let him heal you today. Give your life to him. You don't have to pray a certain prayer. You don't have to walk an aisle, and a certain song doesn't have to be sung. Man, God sees your heart. Whether you're the youngest in the room or the oldest in the room, whether you're in the balcony or you're down low, whether you're online, man, give your life to Jesus. I don't know what in the world you're waiting for. Man, give your life to Jesus. The enemy has deceived you into waiting. Don't wait. This is an invitation, we call it. The root word of invitation is invite. You're invited to respond to the word of God. You're invited to respond to the teaching that God has brought before us today. And so that's one way you can respond is give your life to Christ. But probably for the majority online and majority in this room, if you if you do give your life to Christ, by the way, please let us know. If you just sit there where you are and you say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. If you're in this room or you you're online, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe he rose from the dead. Jesus, come into my life. 
But you don't have to pray that specific prayer, man. He sees your heart. You may just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. But let somebody know. Go to the blue tent. Go to your online campus pastor. Let them know. But probably for the majority in this room, I want to give you a specific invitation to respond. And here it is. I encourage you to do what my friends did in my small group. Man, take the Word of God. Write it down. There may be a situation with a child, with a, with a spouse, at a workplace. Maybe it's physical healing. Maybe it's emotional healing. Maybe it's mental healing. I don't know the situation, but praise God. He knows what everything that's going on in your life right now. Man, He knows. He knows. And I encourage you. Let the Holy Spirit of God lead you to a scripture or scriptures, not as a lucky charm. And like I said, he's not Santa Claus. He is the Savior of the world. But he wants to use his word in power in your life. And he wants you to take the wood of his word. He wants you to place it into the water of your situation or the situation that someone close to you. And you stand on that. You believe that. You speak it. And Jehovah Rapha will show up for sure. But even though the time is late, man, I, I just feel like in this room right now with no one looking around, and this is for you online too, but in this room, balcony and down low, there are people in this room that either you are in need of healing physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually, or you know someone that is. No one's going to come to you. During this season of time, and not everybody's comfortable with someone coming to them, and that's understandable, okay? But if you are in this room, and it's for you or for someone else with no one looking around, I just want to pray for you, for Jehovah Rapha to show up in this situation. And we're going to place the Word of God, the wood of His Word, into the water of this situation together right now. And Jehovah Rapha is going to show up. So with no one looking around, balcony down low, if you need as an area of healing in your life or someone that you know, quietly with no one looking around, will you stand to your feet? Will you stand to your feet? No one looking around. Don't listen for people to be standing. You stand because the Holy Spirit's leading you to stand. No one looking around. No one looking around. Maybe you're standing for yourself or maybe you're standing for someone else, but I don't want to miss this moment. This may be a Mayra moment for you. A Mayra moment, and he wants to bring a miracle. I'm just going to stay here, stay in whenever the Holy Spirit leads you. If you're in this room or online, we're going to pray together. Before we do, let, and let me say this I said it earlier, this is not denominational, this is biblical. The Word of God is clear about just laying our hands on other people, but again, in the context of where we are, we're not going to do that. But here's what I'd like for you to do. For those who are standing, I just want you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. To those who are not, I'm going to ask you just to open your eyes. I'm going to ask you just to stretch out your hand. You don't have to go to them. If you're right next to them, you can. Just lay your hands on them. If you're a spouse, put your arm around them. If you're a child and a mother and a child and a father, put your arms around each other. Lay hands on one another. If you're in family together, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. But if you're not, man, and you're near someone, you don't have to go to them unless they're in your family. And I just want you to stretch out your hand to them, and we're going to believe. Just, just If you're sitting, just stretch out your hand. You don't have to touch them. Man, just a, it's a statement of faith. We're believing for them, for Jehovah Rapha to show up in this situation that they're standing for. Father God, I thank you that your word is true. And God, we claim your word, we stand on your word that is so clear there at Exodus 15. That you are Jehovah Rapha, you are the Lord who heals. Father, standing here today or maybe online, there's people that are grieving. And Father, they need, need their heart to be healed. Or they know someone who is grieving and hurting and they need their heart to be healed. Father, maybe someone that's standing on behalf of someone else, someone that was hurt. Maybe they're standing on behalf of a child that's in the wilderness. And God, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, and you're going to bring them out of that situation. God, maybe it's for physical healing, Father, emotional healing, mental healing. God, we thank you that we can take your word, the wood of your word, and place it into the water of this situation. And so, Father, that's what we do. Your word is clear. 
as the prophet Isaiah, as you breathe the words through him, God, he said, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. Father, I believe it. I stand on it. I know it's true. So, Father, we join our hearts together in agreement for those who are standing, for those that may be online. God, heal these situations in Jesus' name. Father, where there is need of physical healing, God, bring physical healing. Father, where there is a need of mental healing, God, bring that, emotional healing. God, bring that now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those that may be standing on behalf of someone else or for themselves. And Father, they have become bitter rather than better. And Jehovah Rapha, you are healing them of that. Father, right now, you are plucking up that poisonous root of bitterness, and it is gone. And Father, that is where the healing is taking place. And we thank you for it. God, we praise you for your word. We thank you for this time. And Father God, we thank you that you have so many attributes. And right now, we praise you together that you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord who heals. And it's the name of Jesus, the powerful healing name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Everyone stand to your feet. Man, let's praise God for who he is. Put your hands together. Amen. 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 Well, I did good in the first service. I got done a lot faster, but y'all, y'all pumped me up, got me excited. But uh, we're late. We're late. Good thing is, hopefully everybody else has re- left the restaurants, right? But uh, hey, let me pray for us, and we're, we're going to leave. Uh, I don't think there's anything I'm supposed to announce, but thank you for being here today. Let's pray. Father God, you are so good. And God, you know, in my heart, the reason I pause is because, Lord, it seems like the English language, there's not words to communicate with our human lips who you are. God, good just doesn't seem enough. Father, great just doesn't seem enough. Awesome just doesn't seem enough. But God, we thank you that you are all that. You are a great God. You're a good God. You're an awesome God. We praise you for it. And Father, we leave here today. We're asking for divine appointments so that we can pray for miracles in people's lives. We thank you for what you're going to do in three weeks leading up to Easter. And we celebrate now the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. And all God's people said, amen.